Hello there, my name is Jason Schmaltz and I'm an AMJ single pitch instructor and today we're going to focus on rope management and multi-pitch systems. All three systems uh, are in different scenarios so I'll start from the easiest scenario and then work my way out to the hardest. Uh, some of them have some commonalities. Uh, all of them have the same commonality which is the first step is I, once I arrive to the top of a pitch I go ahead and clove myself in. so that I'm safe. And then the first command I'll shout to my partner is off belay so that they know that they can take me off the gree gree. It's important to keep your commands uh, succinct because you don't want to confuse uh, your partners or confuse other parties that might be in the area. So just keeping off belay, on belay, climbing, climb on, those type of succinct commands uh, in your shouting or over radios or whatever is important. Now the most common uh, rope management is when I have a nice ledge and I just need to make a nice pile uh, as I pull up all the slack that's in the system. So As I make my pile, I'll want the pile to be staying uh, in a nice small area, not all over the place, uh, as I pull up the rope. Now, if I'm on a smaller ledge than this and I want to keep the rope from starting to go over the edge or slide over the edge, I can stomp on the rope with my foot and make it into like what's called a pancake. So I'll keep pulling my rope up. Okay, so once I get to my climber, the command they'll typically shout is that's me or um, you're on me. And I'll go ahead and set them up on belay. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use a gree gree because I only have one rope so that's what makes the most sense so go ahead and get them set up and now I can tell them they're on belay on belay climb on and they can start to climb now as I'm belaying I need to continue to watch my pile uh, be mindful of my gree gree that it's feeding out slack as I belay uh, into that pile nice and neat and I can stomp on the pile to keep it nice and suppressed while my climber comes up. So now as my climber approaches, if he's gonna lead the next pitch, then nothing needs to be done with this pile. He's already on the top of the pile and as he climbs, the rope will play off the top. If for some reason I'm going to lead the next pitch, then we will clove him in and go through some of that procedure, which I'll keep a link for in another to another video for you. But one important step is that if I'm going to lead, right now my rope is on the bottom of this pile, so I need to take this pancake of a rope pile that I've made and look at where your rope is that's coming out. Okay, You can see it wants to flip this way. So I want to go ahead and help it do that. So I'll flip it that way. And you can see now my rope is coming off the top of the pile if I'm going to continue to climb. Okay, the second scenario is if I have to do a hanging belay, if I have a very small ledge or limited space, or even no ledge at all, uh, and I need to belay my partner up. So in this case, um, obviously I don't have that here, but I'll go ahead um, and clove in and adjust my clove so that I'm at the very end of the edge. And I can see my partner, okay? So in this case, I've extended my master point. Uh, that won't always be the case that you need to do that, but just for the ledge that I'm on, I have to extend my master point out because you can see my anchor is really far away. Uh, but now as I uh, pull up slack, Instead of making a pile on the ground, uh, we're going to pretend like this is just a big wall here. I have to make the pile on my tether instead. Okay, so the way that that looks is I will pull a certain length of slack through for my first, uh, for the, the uh, loop on my first side. And then I'll switch over to my other side and pull roughly the same amount of slack through. And then I'll go back to my other side. And as I build out these loops, 
I want to slowly progress the rope up my tether. And one good technique for doing this is to make the loops shorter and shorter. Because that way, as I go to pay the loops back out for the next pitch, the loops don't try to gobble each other up. So I kind of try to do that with rope lengths through my hands. So for the first one or two loops, I'll do four, and then I'll do three. So one, two, three. And on the other side, I'll do one, two, three. And I'll do that maybe a couple times. It's important that you keep it nice and neat as you build it out. And then I can just do one or two for the last ones. Okay, so my climber just told me that's me. So I'll go ahead and get the Grigri out. Again, climber down toward my partner. Okay, and what's important as I go to set this up is I want to make sure the Grigri -gri is paying out in a way that's going to help me to continue to make these loops. So you can see this Grigri -gri is paying out slack on the bottom. So that's perfect. That'll help me make, uh, make my loops. Okay, climb on. As I continue to lay my partner up, I'll maintain that, you know, maybe two or even one um, hand lengths as I make my loops. So you can see they're getting shorter and shorter, and that's gonna help me when we go to our next pitch. Okay, the last scenario that we'll discuss on rope management is when you have double ropes or twin ropes. So in this case, uh, I have one partner that's attached to two of these ropes, and we're climbing in a twin or double configuration as we climb up. So uh, you can act as though these ropes are one as you come to clove in. Uh, you can also clove them each separately, but I'll go ahead and clove all together as one. And then similar to the first scenario that we did with a single rope, I'm going to go ahead and pull these up and I'm going to try to make a pile. With double ropes, it's really important to just try to make a pile. If you have to do a hanging belay and you're managing the loops, it can become really tangled. Not to say that that can't happen, but try your best to make a pile. So here we go. So I try to pull them up evenly and not pull like one before the other. So they stay as much like one rope as possible, even though it's two ropes together. So with twin ropes, we have to use the ATC. We can't use the Grigri. So I'll try to have them in the same configuration as when I left the ground, which in this case was the brown one on climber's left, and place them in the ATC. Carabiner on. And place them on the master point. Make sure all my carabiners are locked. And what's really important before I get going is that I make sure that this rope is going to continue to make a nice and neat pile. So you can see as I pull these ropes, they are going to go into the pile nice and neatly. Okay, so I can belay my partner in this manner. So with two ropes, it's a similar uh, method as with one rope on belaying, and that's keeping your brake hand on the brake and just sliding it up by using your non-brake hand to hold the rope steady as you slide. Again, I want to continue to focus on a good pile. I can stomp on the pile if I need to, to try to keep it ni nice and neat. And now as my climber approaches, there's a couple different options. Um, the first, uh, that's the most basic option, is for him to clove in. Now for him to clove in uh, and not make a huge mess, you can see there's already some, uh, what looks like some tangles. Uh, not really though, uh, but the rope can wrap around itself in between me and Devin but it's unlikely that it's going to uh, be wraps that can't be undone just by flaking as he starts to climb and lead the next pitch. So as long as there's no tangles between him and what'll be his clove hitch, then we'll be off to a good start for the next pitch. So I'll get a little bit of extra slack. Devin, come on up. And similar to, to my uh, clove hitch, go ahead and just tie it as one.
And now we can do whatever gear exchange is needed. Once we're ready for him to climb, I can take the back side of his clove and put both climbing ropes in. Pull out enough slack to build my first redirect. Pull it tight. Take his clove out, can I wait? And he's ready to climb. One scenario that might happen while you're climbing with double ropes is the ropes inevitably get tangled or twisted around where it becomes unbearable to continue climbing because the ropes are just too twisted. And there's a way that you can go ahead and try to get those twists out. And that's as Devin has approached me on this belay station, I can take the back side of my clove and take a locking carabiner and we can put this locking carabiner on his belay loop and make a clove hitch. And lock that down. So now he's locked off my clove and we can untie his figure of eights safely so as he's on the back side of my clove and safe, locked off, he can untie both of these figure of eights and we can get those in hand. Take them out of the ATC now. And then whatever unwinding or untangling or reflaking that we need to do, of course we're coming off the top of the pile now as well, uh, we can do that. And then once we get the uh, ropes back to the way we want. He can retie with his figure of eights the way he had it before, reclove in, and then I can take him off the back side of my clove. One pointer on all three of those scenarios is to not neglect uh, rope issues as they arise. If you start to see tangles coming in, if you start to see kinks coming in, try to find a safe ledge or safe place where you can undo one of the ends of the rope or whatever you need to do to take that out. It's not good when these problems start to accumulate because inevitably when someone's on a crux or a potential fall position, they show themselves and you can't progress and get into some bigger trouble. Uh, I hope you found that video useful on different ways of managing rope in multi-pitch. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, obviously there's some scenarios that I left out. I try to just include the most common ones. Uh, leave those comments below and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. Hey, if you like this channel, give us a like or a subscribe and we'll see you all in the crag.